Malate is believed to have come from the Tagalog word maalat, which in English translates to salty. It is also a place where the sunsets of Manila Bay can be enjoyed at, where the statue of our national hero, Jose Rizal, proudly stands, and where government institutions can be found. With so many different sites to visit, it's no wonder this place has become a tourist haven for both the locals and foreigners. But just as this place holds a historical weight, Malate's street names are no different at all. In fact, Malate's streets were named after historical and notable figures who have contributed in the country's development into what it is today. Some famous roads like the Taft Avenue and Rojas Boulevard are very familiar to most of us since we have probably seen them in our history books. But rather than just these two, how about the others? Let's find out. I'm here at Galo Avenue to find out what's really going on in this busy street and what these establishments have to do with Galo himself. Connecting the Taft Avenue and Ross Boulevard is the Galo Street, a place most known as the hub for employment seekers. Here you can see a fusion of both the historical features of Manila and the obvious touch of modernity that came with the passing of time. Most people probably know a thing or two of what can be found along this avenue. But do people really know who Kalo is? Let's find out. Ate, kuya, kilala niyo po ba si TM Kalo? Hindi po. Kilala niyo po ba si TM Kalo? Hindi. Kilala niyo na po ba si TM Kalo? Yes, siyempre, sa historia. Kilala niyo po ba si TM Kalo? Yes. Ah, hindi. Wait, wait. This short stretch of road called Kalo Avenue is named after Teodoro M. Kalo, a journalist, nationalist writer, scholar, educator, legislator, statesman, and historian. He studied law at Escuela de Derecho under the mentorship of Rafael Palma and Juan Sumulong. After graduating in the year 1905, Kalo topped the bar examinations and taught for several years in the same institution where he graduated from a law school currently known as Manila Law College. In 1903, while he was still in his law school, Kalo started working as a staff member in El Renacimiento, a newspaper which advocated the independence of the Philippines from the United States. At a young age, Kalo became the successor of Fernando Maria Guerrero as the editor of El Renacimiento. He also became member of the Philippine Assembly and was later on appointed Undersecretary of the Interior. But the most notable of his accomplishments actually stands right here, along Kalao Avenue. Kalao was the first director of the National Library of the Philippines. His works, such as Ang Pinagtatalunang Akta ng Katipuna, Las Cartas Politicas de Apolinario Mabini, Epistolario Rizalino, Gregorio H. Del Pilar, Hero de Tirad, aided in the development of historic research and writing in the Philippines. And just a few blocks away from the National Library is a street whose name holds a history worthy to be told. Aside from the Luneta Park, this street also consists of a variety of restaurants and street food to choose from. It offers cuisines that will undoubtedly make any passerby crave for different kinds of food. Actually, all the buildings around this area say a lot about who Maria Rosa is. But first, let's ask around how much people know about the name behind the street. Kilala niyo po ba si Maria Rosa? Uh, no. Kilala niyo po ba si Maria Rosa? Actually, no. And sa tingin niyo po, bakit po sa kanya pinangalan yung street na yan? Maybe something to do with the history. Princess. 
Nagkagamot lang din siguro ng mga na ano dati sa war. Born on November 29, 1893, Maria Orosa was the fourth child of eight children of Simplicio Orosa y Agoncillo and Juliana Ilagan. After being granted a government scholarship, she earned a bachelor's degree in pharmaceutical chemistry in 1917, food chemistry in 1918, pharmacy in 1920, and a Master of Arts degree in Pharmacy in 1921 at the University of Seattle. A pioneer in food technology, inventor, entrepreneur, chemist, pharmacist, and nutritionist, Maria Orosa was a compassionate person who used her knowledge and skills to feed and care for both the Filipino and American prisoners at concentration camps. Maria Orosa died at the age of 51 when the hospital she was confined at was bombed during the war. Her life may have been short-lived, but her contributions to this country remain timeless. There are really so many things to do and see in the streets of Malate. But what's even more interesting is that these streets boast a kind of history that we can learn from. This has been Migi Wonders, and this is Historian Calle. <laughs>